Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm an on one, and this is kind of a second video in a in a mini series of two videos, I guess, uh, talking about layers. So in that video, I talked about how I use layers uh, for the purpose of exposure blending, and in this video, I thought I would do a sky replacement. Now, technically, sky replacement is an exposure blend because you're blending a sky from a different photo into a uh, an existing photo. Uh, but I think of them as, even though it's really the same kind of um, method, I think of them as different because an exposure blend to me is I took the exact same scene and I basically combined a darker and a lighter exposure to get a more balanced image. Whereas in a sky replacement, it's a sky from a completely different place, different time, all that, different time of day, and putting it in a photo. So that's what I'm doing in this one. Here's the photo. I've already cropped it. It's a road in New Mexico that I was on once. And uh, it was just kind of cool looking, but not exactly particularly amazing uh, sky. It was kind of cloudy and all that. And all I want to do is make it a sunset because, hey, I like sunsets, right? So um, now to be clear, I did a video in the past using Luminara AI along with On One, which I think they go together really well. And if you don't know this already, Luminar AI has an automatic sky replacement. I would typically do it there, just to be clear. However, if you don't have Luminar and don't want to buy it, I totally get that. If you have On One and want to do a sky replacement, this is how I would go about it just using Luminar. So that's what we're talking about here. I'm going to click plus to add a new layer. And then I've gotten into the extras. They include a bunch of uh, stuff, skies, textures, things like that. And I'm going to go and get this sky that's included in uh, on one. And I'm going to click add as a layer. Now it comes in like that. And what I want to do is get transform and I want to move it up. And so I just want to position the sky. And what I usually do is I go up and I say, okay, where is the bottom of the horizon. Well, you can see the bottom of the horizon is right over here with this bush and that distant mountain kind of merge. And so I want to make sure that the sky covers all of it, of course, because that's um, that would look funny. So basically, I'm just lining it up pretty much exactly with the horizon. And then I just click apply. Now, of course, that looks ridiculous. And so what we need to do is mask in the new sky. And in order to do that, I actually flip the order of the layers. So I grab this sky layer and I pull it down so it is actually below the other layer. And now, as you can see, the base layer is on top. I should uh, call it the land, whatever. Um, and then the sky is on the bottom. And what I want to do, make sure you're on the top layer because otherwise this won't work. And while you're on the top layer, you can click M to get into masking. And I'm going to use AI Quick Mask. And I want to keep and drop. I want to keep some of it and I want to drop other parts of it. Well, what I want to drop is the sky, right? We already know that. That's what the whole video is about. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mark this red all across the sky because I'm basically telling on one, get rid of the sky. And now what I recommend doing is taking your time and um, AI Quick Mask, as the name implies, does a great job. You don't have to be specific, but you may have to refine your mask. We'll find that out in a second. I've done drop and now I want to keep. I'm telling on one, all right, I want to keep whatever I'm going to mark in green, which is, of course, going to be the land mass itself. It's going to be everything but the sky. And so, of course, the edges are where uh, you get tripped up. So, again, take your time and it may need some refinement, but we're just going to go like this and I'm going to tell it all this stuff is green. Keep that, drop the stuff in red. I'm gonna hit apply, see how it looks. And as you can see, I mean, that's pretty darn amazing. There's a tiny bit over here uh, on the mountaintop, which I wanna keep. So I'm gonna shrink my mouse and I'm gonna mask that in a little bit as well. And, you know, something like that and hit apply. And I'm happy to be honest. So I'm gonna click done and I I'm just quite happy with that. And hey, guess what? My new sky is in because I've just told on one, get rid of the old sky and keep the bottom. And so what it's doing is showing me a combination of these two layers, right? The sky, which um, I told it to, to keep, and the, uh, and the land, which I, I kept as well, right? I should say the new sky, which I kept, uh, and the land, which I kept. So that's how I blended those together. And if you need to, you can come in and do some refinement on the mask. You can click on here. You might want to click on view just to look at it and kind of see what it looks like. And sometimes I might come in and play with the levels. You can kind of see, you can make some adjustments here. I think that actually looks really good. The masking in on one is honestly, it's just world class. It's so fantastic. But I think I've got a really nicely blended photo of a new sky and an existing uh, background, if you will, or foreground, whatever it is, uh, base photo, right? So nice looking piece of land, nice looking sky. They don't go together at all. And that's where you go into the editing. And so that's the next step. So 
the first thing I would do is um, you want to get these two layers to be together. So I'm going to right click, make sure you're on the top layer, right click them and click new stamped layer. It's going to merge those, stick that on top, and I might just call this edit layer just so that I know you can double click and uh, call things. But I just want to know that that's the edit layer. That's where I'm going to do all the kind of fun stuff that I love to do in on one, which is edit photos. Okay, so I'm going to start here in the develop tab. I'm going to do some contrast because I definitely want to do that. I want to pull the highlights down a bit. Midtones are coming down a fair amount as well. I am going to be darkening that foreground a bit uh, simply because it, you know, if I'm making this into a sunset, it needs to be a little darker. So, you know, maybe a negative 60, and I'm going to pull the shadows down some as well. And again, this layer is the edit layer, and all I'm trying to do now is get it to, uh, uh, trying to make it look like that sky and that land actually happened uh, at the same time at the same place. In other words, I'm trying to make, make it look believable. So, I've kind of done what I want to do there. I'm now going to go over here to local adjustments and I want to get into masking. And what I want to do is, uh, let's see, actually I need the gradient mask and linear top is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to drop a gradient mask here and maybe tilt it a little bit, maybe adjust the kind of gradient zone, move that up a little bit, maybe something like that. And what I want to do is um, now that I got the mask in place, I want to adjust this exposure. I didn't want it that dark, but maybe something about like that. And I also want to warm it up uh, because it is sunset. So I'm trying to create that warmer feel in the foreground to make it look like that warm golden sunset light is hitting the land. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I've darkened it with this local adjustment and of course warmed it up. So if I turn this local adjustment off, there's the land beforehand, and there it is now. I think that looks much better. Now I'm going to go over to effects, and I'm going to get a couple of fun tools that I like to use. This one is dynamic contrast, and I'm going to leave the, the base number. In fact, that's not true. I'm going to bump them up a little bit, and what I want to do here is just create a little bit more crunch in that foreground because admittedly it was a little bit soft. And so I'm going to go into masking. I want to invert that and I'm going to do an AI quick mask, increase the size of my brush. And I just want to keep the land and um, I want to drop the sky. So drop. I don't want that crunchiness going into the sky. It just doesn't work for me. That is a personal preference. And so something about like that, you don't have to use that big of a mouse, but there we go. Okay. Looks pretty fantastic. I'm going to say done. And as you can see the mask, if I click view, there you go. Again, if you need to or want to clean it up, you can. I just, I'm just i going to leave it like that, but I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to copy the mask. So I've done all I've done here is just crunch up that foreground. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add that same filter. And this is just a personal preference. If you've seen my videos, you know I do this a lot. I'm going to paste that mask and invert it. In other words, now I want to apply dynamic contrast to the sky, but I'm going to do it all in a negative manner. So. That's just me preferring to kind of smooth out skies. It creates a little bit more streakiness, a little bit more softness. It looks a little bit more like a long exposure. It's just a personal preference uh, by all means. It's just me having fun doing what I like to do. So I used the mask that I built before and just flipped it here and put it in the sky with the exact same filter, but negative this time. And now the last thing I want to do is just go in and get photo filter. And the reason why I do not want it on blue for uh, for starters, I need to get the hue to, let's see, about 38, 39. And the amount is going to be about a 15, 14. And what I want to do here, let me turn this off. The one thing about this photo that I think doesn't quite go is that the mountains still have a little bit of a blue look to them. And that's because if you remember, of course, it was a cloudy overcast day. It was not a sunset. So what I want to do is basically warm them up. So I've got the photo filter. And now when I turn this back on, if you just look at the mountains in the distance and I've turned that back on, they're now a little bit warmer. So I need to go mask that in. I'm going to invert so that I'm painting in and I'm using the perfect brush here. Uh, I need to paint in though, not paint out. So just make sure you check all your settings because you know, I do that all the time. I, I do the wrong thing. And then I'm like, oh man, I got to go fix it. Um, so all I recommend doing here is just coming along with your brush. Um, and this is what I'll be doing here and just painting in wherever you think you need to add some of that warmth. I think it looks a little bit better on the mountains if they don't have quite as much of a blue tint to them. So that's what I'm doing here is just coming in and basically adjusting that. I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of this and then I will, uh, show you what it looks like. 
Okay, there you go. So I've painted in that warmer photo filter just into the mountaintops. Let me show you the view of the mask. There it is, that's what it looks like. And um, let me hide that again. And then let me turn this off. Again, if you just look at that little bit of the mountain that's on the horizon line, if I turn it off, you can see it's a little bit bluer. And now when I turn it back on, it's a little bit browner, uh, a little bit warmer. And to me, that just means, um, or, or makes it look like it kind of belongs together. Completely optional step, of course. Uh, it's just something that caught my eye and I wanted to make that you know, appear as though it kind of goes together. Every photo is gonna be different. You may or may not need to do something like that, but whenever I need to adjust a color in a little area like that, I feel like photo filter and a little bit of perfect brush comes in super handy. So um, that is that, and that is my edit, my friends. I was able to take a photo that was basically a fairly blah road shot. I love the road, I love the mountains. I like the idea of the photo but uh, it was not a particularly great sky. And so I just wanted to put a new one in, blend it together to make it look like it goes together. And I feel like I did a pretty good job. Now, it's not perfect. Um, maybe there's some additional edits I could do, but what I mostly wanted to do here is just walk through, you know, getting set up and blending those exposures, that new sky, sticking it in, how you mask it, and how you put it together and refine it. And then the key step, I think, for me is the editing layer, which is this stamp layer, because that's where you basically bring the two different pieces together and try to make it look like they belong together. So a key important step. That's how I did it in this one. I hope it gives you some ideas, maybe some inspiration for things to do in your own photos. And thanks for watching again, my friends. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions, drop them down below. See you in the next video. You guys take care of yourselves out there and adios.